Hey, you guys. So we're going to read Assassination. Um, that is where we left off. So let me find... We did Albert Cluvo. Uh, we did the Sermon of the River. Assassination. Page 118. A month passed. No Albert Cluvo. I didn't think he was worrying about stopping Ned. I didn't think he had enough sense to worry. I just thought he was sick and couldn't get around. I wanted to ask him, not that I cared about Albert Cluveau, but I wanted to know what he was doing. Why all this quiet all of a sudden? Don't tell me conscience was catching up with him. It never bothered him before. But no matter who I asked, nobody had seen Albert Cluveau. When I went to Bayonne on Pigeon, I had to go by the lane where he lived, but I always found excuse not to go to his house. Coming back home, the same thing. I would look down the lane, but I would never lead Pigeon that way. I could have gone to his house in five minutes, but no, never. But I used to see Ned all the time. He used to live just across the road from where he's buried now. He's buried beside the place where he was building his school. The people finished the school after his death, but it was destroyed during the second high water. That was back in 27, when we had a very bad high water. We had one in 12, but the one in 27 was much worse. Ned used to live on the fields of the side of the road. His school was on the riverbank side of the road. And another house is built in the place where his house stood. But we kept the place where his school was and where he's buried. It will never be sold. We collected from people to pay the taxes and keep up the land. But it is ours. It is for the children of the parish and this state. Black and white, we don't care. We want them to know a black man died many, many years ago for them. He died at the end of the other century and the beginning of this century. He shed his precious blood for them. I remember my old mistress when she saw the young Seckish soldier saying, the precious blood of the South, the precious blood of the South. Well, there on that river bank is the precious dust of this South. And he is there for all to see. We have a marker there for the people to stop by and see if they want to. No, it's not a tall and showy thing. It's nothing but a flat piece of concrete. But it's there for all to see if they just get out of the car and look. I used to go by all the time when he was alive. He'd already cleaned up that acre of land and now he was laying down the foundation for the school. The children used to help him in the evening and on the weekends when they didn't have to work. Sometimes I used to stop by and instead of finding them working, I would see them out in the river swimming. I was so scared for Ned's life. I was scared the white people might pay some of them bigger children to drown him. He would always come out of the water when he saw me sitting there on pigeon. You call that building a school, I would say. Me? I call that playing. I have to teach everything, he said. Swimming is good to learn. Looking at Ned now, you could see how big he was, how powerfully he was built in the chest and his shoulders. If he was standing close to me, I would put my hand on his shoulder. You worry too much, Mama, he would say. Do I, Ned? I would say. Because both of us know that day was coming. When and where, we didn't know. Two nights before he was killed, I had a dream where a bunch of Cajuns had lynched him in the swamps. The next morning, I got on Pigeon and went up to his house. When I told him about my dream, he brushed it aside like it was nothing. While I was up there, he told me he was going to Bayonne to get some lumber for his school. He was taking two boys with him, and he was going to spend the night in Bayonne with a friend. He told me to stop worrying. This was making Vivian worry, too. She was already getting nervous, he said. I stayed up there till he left that evening. Then I got on Pigeon and I went back home. The next evening, when he was on his way with the second load, Albert Cluveau shot him down. Alcy Price and Bam Franklin, the two boys, 
he took with him, told us how it happened. They had spent the night in Bayonne with Ned's friend talking about the school. Nobody went to bed before midnight, even when everybody had to get up early the next morning and go to work. They got up around five because they wanted to pick up the lumber and get it back here before the weather got too hot. They got back to the school around 8.30. That evening, when it got cool again, they went back to Bayonne for the second load. After they had loaded it up, it was around 5. They didn't have to go far, 3 or 4 miles, but they had to travel slow because of the road. The road was dirt and full of ruts, and the lumber was heavy. BM said every half mile they had to stop to give the mules a rest. They always stopped in the open. At that time, you had cane fields and houses on one side of the road, trees on the riverbank side. They always stopped near a house or a yard. After resting the mules a few minutes, they would start out again. BM said they had just driven off after the second or third stop when they looked up and saw Albert Clouveau. He was on the mule at the end of the cane row with the gun already sighted at Ned. He told Ned to get down. Ned stopped the wagon, but nobody moved. What do you want? Ned asked him. Get down, Clouveau said. You don't scare me, Clouveau, Ned said. Get down now, Clouveau said. Ned handed Bam the lines. Bam pushed them back. Let me go, Bam said. I don't care about me. But I care about you, Bam, Ned told him. That's what I've been teaching you all the time. I care about you. When will you ever hear me, Bam? I won't let you die, Bam said. He ain't got nothing but a double barrel there. He'll need both of them to bring me down. Stay here, Ned said. Take the lumber home. Finish the school. Talk to my wife. Talk to Mama. No, Bam said. I order you to do that, Ned said. You must listen to me sometime, Bam. Bam and Elsie both said Ned looked at them a second time. Then he looked around. He looked all around him, even glancing at the sky, like he wanted to see everything for a moment. Then he jumped from the wagon and started running toward Clouveau. Clouveau hollered for him to stop and to get down on his knees, but he kept running on Clouveau with nothing but his fist. Clouveau shot him in the leg. The white people had told Clouveau to make Ned crawl before killing him. When Clouveau shot him, he fell to one knee, then he got back up. Clouveau shot again. This time, he tore off half his chest. Albert Clouveau swung the mule around and rode away. Bam and Alcee didn't go after Clouveau. They picked up Ned and laid him on top of the lumber. The lumber was red when they got home. Blood dropped through the lumber on the ground. The trail of blood all the way from where Ned was shot clear up to his house. Even the rain couldn't wash the blood away. For years and years, even after they had graveled the road, you could still see little black spots where the blood had dripped. So this is a good chapter, and there's a few reasons why. So first of all, Ned's the teacher, and he's telling the children what to do. And the children are probably your age. I would think Bam and Elsie are probably about your age. And, and he orders them to listen to him, right? Because teachers, when we're, when we're in school, we're there to take care of you. And, you know, something like when we do those um, Alice drills and stuff, right? It's our job to make sure that you guys are safe. So you can write about that. Um, there were a couple things that came to my mind. One was when Jane talks about still seeing the blood. If you watched and paid attention to um, The Ghosts of Mississippi, when we watched that last month, do you remember um, his wife, after he was shot, Medgar Evers, after he was shot, his wife, she was like scrubbing, right? She had a scrub brush and she's scrubbing the driveway. And she mentions, you know, that like you could still see his blood there. And that might be part of the reason why they move. So... That's something you can write about. You can write about how these are connected, how these stories connect. Um, the other thing I saw, like in my mind, when I was reading, I was paying attention, I was thinking about the things that we've read and watched together, 
And do you remember um, when we watched about the sign that was put up for Emmett Till over where his body was found? And um, I thought about that too, you know, that there was a marker where Ned was, um, you know, a marker near the school so that people today could remember that Ned died for them. And, um, and it made me think of Emmett Till. It made me think about why it's so important that that marker is there by the river. Um, the last thing is what is the meaning behind having Ned crawl on his knees? What is it that the white people wanted? Um, like, what is, like, I guess, what does that mean to you? Uh, I'm not sure if I even understand fully, but I know how I feel when I read it. So you can write about that. And I'll see you. I'm so tired. I don't know why it's the daytime. Um, I'll see you in our next chapter. So our next chapter is the people. So you go write your journals, okay? And then um, I'll see you right back here for the people.